Hi, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. I have a three and a half year old named Kylie and I also have a 22 month old named Mia. Now I've got a lot of really great stuff to share with you in today's video, so I do want to jump right into it, which means from one busy parent to another, today I'm going to be sharing with you all about cooking with young children and also sharing 10 of my favorite recipes to cook with toddlers and preschoolers in your Montessori home. Okay, so really quickly before we dive into the recipes because I'm super excited to share those with you guys, I just want to talk about a couple of small things about this idea of cooking with a young child in the kitchen. Things that I think are ultimately really helpful in the long run. So the first one is this whole notion of having child-sized tools for your child to use. And when I say child-sized tools, I mean like the little mini whisk and the little small mixing bowls and the tiny cutting board, all of those tools that we would normally use that are scaled down to their size. And in a Montessori environment, yes, this is ideal. This is what we would hope to be able to offer our child when we are engaging them in practical life work in the kitchen. Because having tools that are scaled to their size makes their chances of success a lot higher. And so they feel more confident in what they're doing and they're actually able to complete tasks independently without a lot of our interference. But I also want you to know that it's 100% okay if you don't have all of the child size tools and equipment because a lot of the time they will actually reach out and want to use the same wooden spoon or the same spatula that they see you using and even though it's not their size they still try as hard as they can and they make do so it's not the end of the world and it doesn't mean that you can't invite your child into the kitchen it is still going to be an incredibly beneficial experience for them whether or not they have the child size tools so do not let that stop you. With that said though, if you are looking to invest in any child size tools and equipment for the kitchen, I have a link in the description box down below to my Amazon storefront and there's a whole category in there exclusively dedicated just to these kitchen tools that are all child sized, either ones that I personally use in my own home or ones that are on my own wish list. So if you're looking for some ideas, that is a great place to start. The next thing that I wanted to make you aware of is that your child's ability to complete certain certain kinds of tasks in the kitchen is going to be highly dependent on two things. Number one, your child's age, and number two, your child's level of prior experience with these things. So for example, a 15 to 18 month old child who is brand new to doing practical life work in the kitchen, they really are only going to be able to complete the most baseline levels of tasks versus a much older child, like an older toddler who's had some experience or even a preschooler, they're going to be able to do things that are a lot more advanced because they have the dexterity, they've got the fine motor skills to do those things, they have the comprehension and the prior experience of seeing you do it or maybe even having had some chances to try it themselves in the past. So they've got these things to build on and they're going to be able to do a little bit more. And I say this because I want to urge you to temper your expectations expectations, especially if your child is brand new to working in the kitchen with you. They are going to need a lot of practice before they reach a certain level of independence and capability like you might see in other pictures and videos online of other children who have been doing it already for quite some time. So give your child some grace, allow for some mistakes, and that brings me to my last point which is it is going to be messy. Expect your child to make a lot of spills. Expect your child to have a lot of oopsies all over the place. Just expect there to be a mess. This way, the bar is set very low and you don't really have a lot of room to become super frustrated because you know that's what's going to happen going into it. It's also going to take a lot longer for you to complete some of these recipes because naturally our children move a lot slower than we do. And you have to remember that they're learning whereas you already know it and this is basically old hat for you. So we have to consciously remind ourselves to slow down a little bit, not to rush our children and say, hurry, 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 okay, do this, why aren't you going faster, things like that. You want to just bite your tongue, slow down, let them go at their own pace. If they happen to spill something and oops all over the place and it makes a huge mess, really try to rein your natural reaction in, which I think for a lot of parents is, oh my goodness, there's a huge mess that I now have to clean up. 
try to rein that in and just respond with a very simple, oops, it looks like you spilled that flour all over the counter. What do we need to do to clean that up? And then involve your child in the cleanup process. This way they can see their mistake as an opportunity for learning. They can learn what they need to do when that happens, as opposed to feeling like, oh no, I'm gonna be in trouble because I made a big mess. You really want to respond to those kinds of mistakes as neutrally as possible to give them as much time as they need. This way they don't feel like you're like hulking over them and watching them and scrutinizing every little mistake that they make because they are going to make mistakes. And ultimately doing so will give them more motivation to want to keep trying in the future, even when some of those mistakes have been made. And finally, we have to remind ourselves that for our children, it's about the process, not about the end product. They are focused on learning how to scoop flour into the bowl without making a huge mess. They are excited about learning how to crack an egg. They will spend an eternity mixing that mixing bowl for you over and over and over again and just almost watching, like mesmerized as they're doing it. And they get excited about squishing their little fingers into the dough and seeing what it feels like. And if they're old enough, they really love to learn like how to roll out a little ball of dough and place it just right on the cookie sheet. That's what it's about for them. Like that's the stuff for our kids. They could care less whether or not some of those cookies come out misshapen, ugly, and burnt when all is said and done. They don't care. They're still going to eat them and tell you that it's the most delicious thing that they've ever eaten. So just try to remind yourself of that when you are starting to feel a little bit frustrated and know that you're doing your child a world of good by inviting them into the kitchen and allowing them to participate in whatever capacity they're able to participate. And ultimately, you're creating lasting memories for your child. These are the things that they're going to look back on when they're adults with children of their own that they're going to remember fondly and that they're going to cherish. I know that cooking and baking with my girls in the kitchen is hands down one of my favorite aspects of doing Montessori at home with them. And I am so excited to be able to share these recipes that we love so much with all of you. And a bonus is that a lot of these recipes are very adaptable for a wide range of dietary needs. So even though my girls don't have any dietary restrictions, it is super simple to swap out the egg for an egg substitute or the butter for a plant-based butter or the cow's milk for a non-dairy milk, whichever one is your favorite. Or if you're a vegetarian or a vegan to just take the meat out and replace it with some beans or some extra veggies. So there's a lot of different ways that you could go with these recipes and they're nothing super crazy. I honestly feel like they're pretty basic recipes, but they are our favorites and they're are ones that my girls will eat time and time again without question and they love to make them so I thought that these were good ones to share with all of you and if you are interested in trying out any of the recipes that you see in the video I created an entire blog post that is dedicated just to these recipes which I will link in the description box down below for you it has a list of all of the ingredients and possible substitutions for other dietary needs as well as all of the instructions and then of course it helps to be able to see them in action in this video today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the recipes. All right, so this first recipe is just about as basic as it gets. It is simple scrambled eggs and toast. Now, depending on your child's age, they may or may not be ready to try cracking an egg, but if they are, this is certainly a very first exciting step for them. After all the eggs have been cracked into the bowl, you can add a little bit of milk or non-dairy milk if you so choose, but otherwise you can just leave the eggs as is, give them a whisk or a fork and have them scramble away. And if your child is a bit older, let's say at least preschool age, or if you feel confident in their abilities to safely work near a cooktop without burning themselves, then under your supervision, you can allow them to pour the eggs into the hot pan and actually scramble the eggs themselves. Now, as for the toast, simply retrieving the slices of bread and putting them into the toaster is usually pretty exciting for most young children. So you can allow them to start with that task. And then once the toast is actually made, you can allow them to spread their own butter or avocado mash or jam, whatever their topping of choice is onto the bread all by themselves. It's also really helpful to portion out just a small little bit of whatever the topping is that they're planning to put on their toast. This way they don't go too crazy with it. And if the topping they're using is butter, do make sure that you soften the butter a little bit ahead of time just to make it a little bit easier for them to spread onto their toast. 
And finally, once everything is assembled, if your child enjoys seasoning on their eggs, then you may invite them to do this step independently as well. Now, if you're looking to jazz up breakfast, then this next recipe might be worth a try. It is fluffy blueberry pancakes. So you can start out by having your child add the dry ingredients to a single bowl. So they'll add flour, sugar, or any other sweetener of your choice, baking powder, and then salt, and they'll mix that all together. And then in a separate bowl, you'll have them mix the wet ingredients. So they can crack the eggs into the bowl if they're able, otherwise you can do it, and then they can scramble them up. And then they can add in the milk and the melted butter. You can then invite your child to do a little bit more mixing before they finally add those wet ingredients to all the dry ingredients and mix one more time. Again, depending on your child's age, you can certainly get them involved in pouring ladles of pancake batter onto the hot pan for you, or you can do this step yourself. I would also like to add that you do not have to use blueberries if this is not a fruit that your child enjoys. You can certainly substitute other things like sliced banana, chopped strawberries, chocolate chips, whatever other mix in your child enjoys, or you can just leave them plain. And finally, once the pancakes are all done cooking, they are certainly sweet enough with the blueberries inside of them to serve as is. However, if your child enjoys butter and maple syrup on top of their pancakes, then I would encourage you to invite them to spread their own butter on top of their pancakes and maybe even pour their own maple syrup from a small pitcher. Now, moving on to lunch recipes, let's start with turkey and cheese roll-ups. This is another super simple one. You will start by inviting your child to get a piece of turkey or other deli meat that they enjoy, as well as their favorite kind of cheese, to place the cheese on top of the turkey, and then you can show them how to roll them up together. If your child enjoys lettuce, you can also add a slice of leafy lettuce to the turkey and cheese roll up to turn it into a lettuce roll up. And then similar to a charcuterie board, you might offer your child their favorite whole wheat or gluten-free crackers to go along with it, as well as a side of fresh fruit or some carrots and ranch, hummus, guacamole, anything that they typically like to snack on. And if you're looking for a lunch or even dinner recipe that is a little more hands-on, then you might try your hand at making mini pizzas. Now you can certainly use pre-made pizza dough that you've purchased from the grocery store for this recipe, but if you are feeling like you're up for a challenge, then I would encourage you to try out this super simple pizza dough recipe with your little one. To start out, you'll have your child add the yeast and the sugar in a large bowl, as well as a little bit of warm water, and then have them whisk that up until it's dissolved. Next, you can invite them to add the flour, as well as a little bit of olive oil and some salt, and then they're going to stir and stir and stir until the dough turns into a soft ball. It does start to clump up and get a little bit tougher to mix as it starts to come together. So if they look like they're getting a little tired, then you can certainly offer to jump in and help. Once the dough is completely formed into a sticky ball, you will turn it out onto your floured work surface and then you'll dust yours and your child's hands with a little bit more flour and have them help you knead the dough until it's really smooth and elastic, usually for about five minutes. Once this is done, your child can place the dough ball into a lightly oiled bowl and cover it with saran wrap. And then you'll want to place it somewhere like in a microwave or inside the oven, just somewhere warm so that it can rise for about 30 minutes. Once the rising time has completed, you'll punch the dough down a little bit and then you'll actually take it out and divide it into quarters so that you have four tinier dough balls, which makes enough for four mini pizzas. At this point, your child can dust their hands with a little bit of flour again and get to work flattening out and spreading the dough into an actual pizza shape. And then finally, the best part of all is getting to add the sauce as well as a little bit of cheese and whatever other toppings your child enjoys to their own pizza. And then finally, you'll bake the pizza in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius for about 12 to 15 minutes until everything looks bubbly and the crust is a golden brown color. This next recipe is one of our family's favorite afternoon snacks and that is a rainbow smoothie. Smoothies are one of the easiest things to make with even the youngest of toddlers simply because it doesn't involve much other than placing ingredients into the blender. Now we call this smoothie a rainbow smoothie simply because all of the ingredients reflect all of the colors of the rainbow. 
There is no added sugar. We simply use a variety of fresh fruits, vegetables, and greens, as well as a little bit of coconut milk. And it yields a delicious tasting smoothie that even the pickiest of eaters will enjoy. You can also add a tablespoon of chia seeds or flaxseed meal, sprouts, wheatgrass juice, anything like that, just to help bump up the nutrition value even more. But there are literally endless combinations of smoothies that you can make with your children. Everything from strawberry banana to pineapple mango coconut, a classic green smoothie, or even a very decadent cocoa almond butter banana smoothie. Another homemade snack recipe that my girls love that is also super simple and fast to make are chocolate date balls. Not only are they super decadent and basically taste like little brownie bites, but they are also vegan and paleo. They're gluten-free, they don't have any added sugar, and they're freezer friendly. To start out, you'll have your child place the dates and the walnuts into a food processor, and then you'll mix it all up until everything is super crumbly. Then your child adds the rest of the ingredients, which includes cocoa powder, salt, almond butter, almond milk, and vanilla. And then they'll mix it again until it basically turns into a giant chocolatey looking ball. You also don't have to use the walnuts. You can substitute other unsalted softer nuts like pecans or cashews or any combination of them. And you don't have to use almond butter and almond milk. You can substitute any nut butter of your choice and whatever your favorite non-dairy milk happens to be. If your child is old enough to understand how to roll dough into a ball, then you'll have them do this part themselves and place them onto a plate or a small baking sheet. Otherwise, this is a step that you might need to help your child with. And finally, you can place them into the refrigerator just so that they can harden up a little bit before you eat them. Otherwise, if you're planning to store them for the future, then you can place them into the freezer. The next recipe is one of our family's favorite dinner dishes, and that is a burrito bowl. These are really fun to make with young children because there are so many different skills involved in the preparation and the making of the burrito bowl itself. So we like to start out with actually measuring out, pouring, and then rinsing the rice that we make. We make ours in a rice cooker, but it can also just as easily be made on the stovetop. Next, you can invite your child to help prepare all of the vegetables and other fresh toppings that you're planning to place into the burrito bowl. So for our family, we like to chop up fresh romaine lettuce as well as some Roma tomatoes. And then we open a can of black olives as well. And when we have them on hand, we also like to incorporate some fresh avocado. As far as the protein in your burrito bowl, you can basically use anything that you have on hand and that you like. Although on this particular night, our family chose to use canned black beans and ground beef. But if you are a vegetarian or a vegan, then it is very easy to simply omit the meat entirely and substitute more vegetables or other kinds of beans. Once everything is prepped and cooked, the final step, which is usually the most exciting part, is actually assembling the burrito bowl itself. For children who are old enough to serve themselves, I would encourage you to allow them to do so. Let them choose whatever it is that they think they want in their burrito bowl and to serve as much as they think they will eat. But for younger children, you can of course portion everything out for them. We also like to top our burrito bowls with a little bit of shredded cheese and Greek yogurt sour cream. Although again, if you are a vegan or vegetarian, you can simply omit the dairy altogether or use an acceptable substitute. The next dinner recipe is turkey and bean chili, which is one of my three-year-old's self-proclaimed favorites to make. Now this recipe cooks exclusively in a crock pot, so all of the involvement on your child's part is going to be in the prep work. So you'll start out by having your child help you chop up all of the fresh produce, which includes a red and green bell pepper, some celery, and tomato. There's also an onion and some garlic, but I usually reserve these ones for myself to chop up simply because I don't want my children to feel like their eyes are burning. An older child who has had some practice in chopping some vegetables can use a nylon chef's knife, as you can see here in this video that my three and a half year old is using. However, for a much younger child, I would definitely recommend using something much smaller, like a child-sized butter knife or a wavy chopper. Now, after everything has been chopped up, your child can scrape those into the crock pot, and then you'll move on to opening all of the canned items and pouring those things into the crock pot as well. And that includes some diced green chilies, crushed tomatoes, and some tomato sauce. And the last step is to have your child help you measure out and pour in all of the different dried seasonings, which includes chili powder, oregano, basil, cumin, salt, and pepper. 
As for the ground turkey, that is something that you can easily brown up in a pan on the stove over on the side while your child is busy cutting up all of the vegetables and then add it back in at the end right before everything gets mixed together. After that, your child can stir everything together for you and then you'll cook it on low in the crock pot for about six to seven hours. And again, even though this is a turkey and bean chili, you can certainly make this a vegetarian or vegan meal by replacing the turkey with other beans and vegetables instead. Moving on to dessert, the next recipe is oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. For this one, you'll start out by inviting your child to add some softened butter, sugar, eggs, and vanilla extract to a small bowl. You'll beat these ingredients together using an electric hand mixer for about five minutes. And depending on your child's age, you may actually invite them to kind of assist you by helping you hold the electric hand mixer. However, I would not allow them to hold the hand mixer exclusively by themselves until they are a bit older. After this is done in another bowl, you can have your child add the oats, some flour, baking soda, baking powder, and salt, all of the dry ingredients. They'll then mix up all of these dry ingredients together until it's all combined and uniform. And then they can pour the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients bowl about one cup at a time, mixing in between each step. The next step is to have your child mix in all of the chocolate chips to the batter. And of course, they're probably going to want to sneak one or two and that's totally fine. The next step is to have your child use a large cookie scoop if they're capable of using one or just a large spoon to drop large spoonfuls of dough onto the cookie sheet. You'll then bake it in the oven at about 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius for about 13 minutes. When they're all done, allow them to cool for about 10 minutes and then enjoy. And our last recipe is also a dessert. It's carrot cake mini muffins. So this recipe does require fresh grated carrot. And if your child is old enough to safely use a grater, then I would encourage you to invite your child to do the prep work for that part and actually grate the carrot themselves. Next, you will have them measure out, pour, and then stir together all of the dry ingredients, which includes flour, cinnamon, baking powder, baking soda, and salt. Next, you can invite your child to crack eggs into a separate bowl. If they aren't able to crack them, then you can do that part and then they can just whisk them up for you. You can then have them add in the brown sugar as well as the melted butter and the applesauce. And then finally, they'll stir in all of the grated carrot. They will then add this wet mixture to all of the dry ingredients in the other bowl and stir just until everything is mixed together. Next, your child is going to spoon the batter into the muffin cups, either using a large cookie scoop or just a large spoon until they're about two thirds full. Now, if you are using paper liners, this is actually a really fun task to have your child do is to line all of the little cups with the paper liners, but otherwise you can just as easily grease the cups as we did here. And then finally, you'll bake the muffins at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius for about 20 minutes until they've turned light brown. All right, so those are my 10 favorite recipes to cook with toddlers and preschoolers at home. If you have any go-to recipes that your little one loves to be involved in in the kitchen with you, then please feel free to share that with us in the comments down below. And if you are interested in learning more about Montessori at home and positive discipline parenting, I have several e-courses that walk you through it step by step. So I will leave a link to that in the description box down below. And finally, if you are new to my channel, I also wanted to let you know that this video is part of a much larger series on this YouTube channel called Montessori at Home, which is aimed at providing practical tips and advice for busy parents like you and I for implementing Montessori at home with our children. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in watching more of, then you might consider subscribing to my channel. This way you don't miss a new video because I do upload a new one just like this one every single week. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you next time. Bye.